In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. May the Lord's grace and blessing dwell on us all, Amen. My blessed, today, in short, there is a message, a, a serious message, and a message that we should, should all listen to and take heed of. And the message, in short, is two words. Be prepared. Watch. It starts with our Lord Jesus Christ was sitting with his disciples on the Mount of Olives. And the Mount of Olives is opposite the temple. And they looked at the temple and marveled at the beauty of the temple, the grand design of the temple, and all the marbles and stones in them. And said to the Lord, look at this temple. It's fantastic, it's beautiful, it's grand. And he said, do you know, it will come times that not a single stone will be on another one. It will be completely demolished. And they were shocked because for them, the temple is everything in their life. The temple is where God resides. The temple is heaven for them. The temple is everything for them. And if the temple goes, life will end. And they thought that if the temple is demolished, as our Lord Jesus Christ said, then it is the second coming. So they asked him, okay, well, tell, tell us, tell us, when is this going to happen and what are the signs? So they ask two questions. When is this going to happen and what are the signs that will precede this happening? I just wonder sometimes, why did they ask this question to our Lord Jesus Christ? Was it because of curiosity or because of uh, trying to be the keep of a, a big secret themselves? Or they were really interested to know in order to get prepared. So when our Lord Jesus Christ said that this happened on this day, then they get prepared quickly before this day and guarantee heaven. It's like, it's like on the old Christian days when uh, some people thought that because baptism washes you from your sins, then they wait for baptism till they are on their deathbed. And when they are on deathbed, they ask to be baptized. So they say that they will guarantee to go to heaven. Obviously, this is very wrong practice because you never know what, when they will die or, or, they will die or what will happen. It, it is stopped. In fact, actually, uh, Emperor Constantine the Righteous himself wanted to do that. So Jesus Christ answered the one part of the question about the signs, but he told them frankly and clearly, nobody knows when the second come is coming. Nobody knows. But watch yourselves. Watch yourselves. Nobody will know, and we, don't, we are not really interested that much in when the second coming, the real second coming of Christ will happen, because our second coming, we don't know when it will come, maybe in a minute, in an hour, or a day, or a year, or whatever. So what he was saying to them, watch themselves. He meant, do not watch this temple, which is built of stones and bricks. Watch your temple, your inside temple, because this is where God resides. This is the temple that was created in you and all of us when we were baptized. Because when we were baptized, the old temple was demolished, exactly like Solomon Temple. And God created a temple, a new temple in us, that he likes to dwell and reside in it. And he told them some signs. And if you compare these signs to the signs that were mentioned in the book of Revelation, um, chapters 8 till 11, you will go and read it and you see that when the angels blow their trumpets, this is exactly what happened. And you can compare word for word what our Lord Jesus Christ told his disciples on that day to 
what uh, John the theologian wrote in his revelation. And he told them to be ready, watch, ready. He kept, he kept repeating this word, watch, be ready, isharu, wasalu, be prepared. And he gave them some examples, uh, some signs about what will happen, which are happening nowadays. We all notice that. Famines, wars, earthquakes, betrayals, sins all over the place, sexual immorality, everybody is doing what he wants. And he gave them also some examples of what they should do. So he said, people in Judea should go up to the mountain. Means people who are in the church, us, should look forward to higher spiritual level, should aim to go to the mountain before the second coming. And if somebody is on the rooftop, shouldn't go down to the house to get his coat. This man or this person on the, on the housetop means he's high in his spiritual way, he's good in his prayers and practice, and should not go down and remember these earthly things that he's left downstairs, which is the coat. He should forget all about earthly things and stay on the rooftop. And this man who was in the field should not go back to his house to take anything from the house. What would this man in the field be doing? He will be working, he will be serving God. So if you are in this field of serving and watching yourself, do not go back to your, to, to your house. Stay in your service, stay in your purity. And he said, woe to the pregnant women of these days. He didn't mean pregnant women, physical pregnant women, but usually pregnant woman is heavy and moving heavily with, her, with, her, uh, with what she carries in her tummy. And he was telling us, don't be laden with your sins. You have to get rid of your sins and be quick in action. And the same with woe to the women who are nursing babies on those days. Nursing babies means spreading, spreading sins, um, uh, offending people, stumbling people, spreading sins to people. And pray that your flea will not be in winter. What's wrong with winter? Winter is cold with short days. So you must be hot in your heart, hot in your spirit. Don't be cold like winter when the second comings happen. And also he said, pray that your flea will not be on a Sabbath. Why Sabbath? Because people, Jewish people, were always restricted in Sabbath. Don't do this, don't do that. Don't even move that 2,000 steps in a day. That much restriction. So don't be restricted with your sins. Don't be restricted with what you do outside the commandments. Be hot in spirit and Back to this winter, if you go to chapter 3 in the Revelations, when, when John the theologian was taking the revelation from God, and there was a message to the bishop or the angel of the church of Lovidokians, the Lovidokians, and he said to him, because you are hot, and because you are not, sorry, because you are not hot and not cold, because you are lukewarm, I am going to vomit you from my mouth. Because you are lukewarm, you are in, in between, you are not hot, you are not cold, so I am going to vomit you from my mouth. So what God is asking us to do, to be hot in, in spirit and to be ready for the second coming, because we do not know really what's the second coming. And he repeated again to his disciples and said, it's not really uh, when, when uh, all this happens and the sun will darken, the moon will darken, and darkness will prevail on earth, 
this is not what you should be looking for. You should be looking inside yourself to be watch, watchful and also to be ready at any time because this is the second coming for you personally. May our Lord grant us to be ready and to give us all this hot spirit in us and to cleanse us to be ready by repentance all the time and grant us a share and inheritance in this beautiful city that he's already prepared for us, a city of heavenly Jerusalem, where we'll see him face to face and have his name on our foreheads. Glory be to God forever. Amen. Amen.